Hey guys, today we're going to go over redrum drum computer. Not a reverb drum computer like when I screwed up last time! Okay, so first, let's create a redrum. You can do this by right clicking, going down to instruments, and selecting redrum drum computer. You can also do this from the tool window which is found in Windows, Show Tool Window, and from here, you can simply drag in whatever device you need. Redrum Drum Computer is a sequencer, often used for drum beats. It has 10 channels that can play various types of audio files, meaning potentially a 10-piece drum kit. To preview each instrument you have, you can just click the Play button found at the top of each instrument channel. There are a lot of presets of kits, and you can use those if you're going for a specific feel and the kit satisfies it. You do this by clicking the Browse Patch icon and selecting a new drum kit. However, you can also make your own drum kits by changing the individual drums. This is done in a similar way by clicking on the Browse Sample folder icons and selecting the specific drum you want. If you have a refill, which is basically downloadable extras to add to your sound bank that may or may not cost money, it won't be part of the original Reason Factory sound bank, so you'll have to go back to Reason and find your refill. If you create a drum kit that you like, you can click the Save Patch button to save it as your own personal kit. There are multiple ways to make your actual drum beat. The simplest is by using the pattern sequencer. Each of the squares in the pattern sequencer represent 1 16th of the bar. For now, let's assume that the beat is in 4-4, also known as common time. 1, 5, 9, and 13 are the four downbeats. From here, you can just click at the point you want the sample to play. To switch between the instrument you're looking at, you click on the select button found underneath each instrument. Clicking Run will turn on the drum machine and play whatever it is you have selected. Not a bad beat, but it's a little repetitive. We can change this in two ways. One is to mess around with the number of steps. Steps represent how many beats will play before the entire thing loops. In doing so, you could create a bar, or measure, with 4 beats, 8 beats, etc. You can also affect the value of each beat by turning the resolution knob, and thus changing it from 1 16th to 1 32nd, 1 16th triplet, etc. Back to our 16th step beat. We can vary the beat by changing it from 16 to 32, doubling the number of steps. Reason displays 16 beats at a time, however, so you need to use the Edit Steps Select option to adjust which steps you're looking at. We can make a second beat here, which will cause the loop to switch back and forth between the two types of beats. We can also go to Pattern Select and select number 2, which will give you a fresh play to work with. However, you can still go back to the original beat whenever you want. As you noticed, for a second, you couldn't hear anything despite the fact that I clicked in notes. That's because I had selected 17 through 32 on the steps adjust when I was really working with 1 through 16.
Next I'm going to show you the ways you can change each sound. The important features here include panning, whether you hear it more in your left ear or right ear, levels, how loud it is, pitch, how high or low in frequency it is, length, how long the sample plays, and this option here gives you the ability to change whether it fades out slowly or stops abruptly. Down here you have an accent change. It gives you the three options, hard, medium, and soft. On the right, you have an option that says flam, which causes the drum to strike twice with a small interval. These effects are both applied by selecting the one you want and then clicking it into the redrum pattern sequencer. For example, I can select hard and then click in a new note and it will now hit harder than the other ones, which are selected at medium. Or, I can place it over an existing note, thus changing it from medium to hard. To change it, you simply change the setting and click over the note. And to get rid of it altogether, just click an extra time to remove the note. Next I'll be using flam, which is used mostly in snares. I'll use that as an example. First I activate flam, and then I click in a note. As you raise the meter, the two strikes of the snare drum get farther and farther apart. This snare sounds better without the flam though, so let's get rid of this. First you'll turn off flam, and then click in a new note without the flam. Now that we've made our beat, we need to get it into the track, into the sequencer, so that it is actually part of our song. We can do this by right-clicking the device, and then selecting Copy Pattern to Track. In your sequencer, wherever your left and right markers are, is where the pattern will be copied to. Let's listen to it. That's not what I remember. Now that you have it in the track, when you press play, it'll run in the read room sequencer and the track, so you need to silence the redrum by clicking this button that says Enable Pattern Section. Now it will run only in the sequencer. And you have your beat! The music in this video was actually composed by some of our members in the group Zebra. Go check out their music! If you are actually in CCA Composition Club, but have not taken our audio tech classes, make sure to do that. You'll learn way more in technical skills, understanding of audio tech, and even the audio tech industry than you could ever get from these videos. If not, subscribe for new videos coming soon.